Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I've had quite a few people to message me and write me and ask me what type of brushes I use and if I could do an explanation of what I use them for. Well yeah, we know what you use them for, but like what kind of brush do you use per application? So in today's video, we're gonna paint this guy here, Mr. Daredevil, a very, very cool model I done in one quarter scale and uh, we're gonna paint him today and I'm gonna go over some of the brushes that I use in order to paint him, hopefully answering some of the questions that you've asked on that and also helpfully passing on some paint tips to you as well. So the designer of this Daredevil here goes by the name of Bow87, B-O-U-87. And so I got the file and I decided to print this in a quarter scale because I don't see very many Daredevil models like this and I love museum poses. And so I printed up on the Lynette Deck Printer and the Lynette Base 8K Printer. And so today I want to show you how I painted this and uh, go over my brushes and kind of talk to you a little bit about that as well. So when it comes to brushes, it's no secret. I am very abusive with my brushes. I usually buy some of the cheapest that money can buy. I've actually got a couple of links in the description from Amazon that you can go on there and buy some really cheap sets if that's your thing. So I really don't get into very expensive brushes simply because I ruin them in no time. So usually if I can find a good paint set for 10 or 15 bucks, I'll get a few sets of them and then I'll just wear them out. So yeah, I buy all these uh, cosmetic brushes and use these for cleaning off the models and then I also use them for dry brushing as well. And uh, I never throw away an old brush away. I can always find some sort of use for it, whether it's putting it on varnish, paint, uh, primer or glue or something of that nature or even pastels so yeah so so that's pretty much my take on my brushes there's nothing really too fancy I do have a couple of go-to brushes that I've actually used on almost every single model and those are liner brushes and flat brushes and uh, I'm going to show you some of those today again uh, this is what I use you could use something totally different What's for better coverage? What do you use for details? What do you use, you know, for, I don't know. But I'm gonna go over a little bit of that today with you and uh, paint up a really cool model too. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so this is the Daredevil that we're going to paint up today. Uh, right now, yeah, I have it in uh, all in primer. All the prep work has pretty much been done on it. And uh, this is the base. It's pretty simple. It's just a simple museum pose. And uh, we're going to make uh, this one um, just the basic red and black from the Netflix uh, costume. So from the bottom of the base to the top of the head is 23 inches. It is a quarter scale. I printed this one big. And the only difference uh, from the design is if you notice right here where the pipe is busted, um, actually it didn't print all the way but that's pretty cool because we're going to do a little bit of a busted pipe rust effect right there I wasn't going to reprint this whole entire base over just from that and actually give it a little bit of character so I'm kind of digging that the only other thing that I had problems out of were the chin here actually didn't form and which was very weird the supports actually come off of it uh, but I actually used some uh, Aves epoxy on it and sculpted it on there and you really can't tell that it was missing his chin. So this is the color that we're going to use for the base of the costume and it's not a red it's actually a kind of a, a reddish brown and this is a new color that I found and uh, I've been wanting to try it out for a little while so we're going to paint it and uh, see what it looks like. So let's have one last look at him in the gray primer and bam and we got color on him uh, I will say that I did uh, use a burnt red uh, after I put the one red on or the brown that I showed you I just didn't like it it was too light color too brown too tan but this is going to be a perfect color moving forward alright so a couple of things we got to do here is we're gonna go ahead and start painting the black part of the costume or the suit uh, we're gonna be painting the boots the knee pads uh, and just different parts of the suit. Now over here I do have the Hot Toys version um, uh, for color scheme and just to make sure that we're placing everything the correct spot uh, for the suit. Alright so now we're going to start painting some of the black work on here. Thank you. 
So doing this right here, um, I like to use a long liner brush. I know a lot of you guys have been asking what kind of brushes I've been using. And um, so I like to use a long liner brush like this so I can actually get off into the, uh, the crevices and stuff underneath the folds and everything like that of the material of the suit or whatever. All right, so another thing that these long liners are good for are for when you have a area like this that has a lot of twists and turns and you can load up enough paint on it and you can pretty much go in one consistent line and just twist your brush around to contour to the area that you have to go in. Oh, so another good thing for these liner brushes uh, that I use them for is I like to uh, map out certain areas, line them up to where uh, I'm going to be adding a good amount of paint, like such as this area in the arm here. Um, I'm going to just map out, line it out, and I'm going to uh, take a flat brush a little bit later, and that way I can get an even coat of paint on there. But this way I can go ahead and get everything ready for this uh, mass amount of paint that I'm going to have to use. I don't want to use a liner on this big of an area because it's going to leave streaks and it just won't go on evenly. And when you have fine detail like you see here into the pores of the suit, uh, then you want to make sure that you get a good even coverage because if not, then you're just going to have a bunch of paint glopped up on there and it's not going to look very good at all. So when I have a lot of area to color, I will just use one of these shaders here. This is like a number 10 and uh, I just you know, when I'm just covering a whole bunch of area and I want a good even coat, uh, I will use these. Now what I tend to do is, I tend to like put it on, like especially with highly textured areas like this, I just don't just rub it on. I kind of put a little bit on it, almost like going to a dabbing motion. That way I keep the texture and that way I don't get any streaks or anything like that but that way it uh, actually gets into the pores of the texture and uh, it doesn't look so shiny, it doesn't look so uh, uneven. And I'll make sure I go through and just kind of almost like in a dry brushing type of motion. All right, so now we're gonna do the boots and I'm gonna use a little bit larger one of those aligners. I'm gonna use a number nine here to get around with just a basic black. We're going to go around the base of it. So once I get done with the liner, then I'll just go back to the same old flat brush right here to fill in the area. So once I've got the boots done, I'll go back and do the shin guards and the knee pads with this number two flat. Uh, and this is a little smaller brush, but it allows me to get around in tight areas such as this and get a good consistent line. It allows me to get a good coverage and allows me to get a good line down and do it quickly. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some detail brushes on the very fine areas up here on the cowl. And these brushes here, I actually made this one yellow one right here. This is an 18 0, and I actually took a few bristles out to make my own brush to make it a little bit finer detail brush. And this one here, I'm not sure exactly which size this is. So next I'll use an array of brushes for details. And I'm going to start off by doing some of the metal work with this gun metal here.
And the last part we're going to work on is the face. And I do have my own little mix of skin tones here. This is actually going to be an easy one because we have no teeth, we have no eyes other than just the red lenses from the suit. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some shading with some pastels. So I shaved up some here on a plate over here, and we're going to do a little bit of the 5 o'clock shadow here up on the face. So after we get done with that, we're going to keep using this pastel and we're going to do some shading on the body. Alright, and so the last thing that I will do for the face is I will add this red to the eyes. All right, so for the base, um, I'm gonna paint the brick this uh, fire red right here and maybe give it a wash. And then right here I said I, earlier I had a little bit of a break right here where it didn't print. But this is actually pretty cool because I'm gonna use that, kind of give it a little rusted effect on there like it's kind of been draining out on the rooftop. And then um, I'll do a wash on all the rest of it and dirty it up pretty good. And uh, yeah, should look pretty good when we're done. So for the brick, I'm gonna use this number three here. It's a, actually a little bit of a liner here, but it's a coverage brush, as you can see by how it's kind of frayed on the tip. So what I'm thinking is, I might be better off going ahead and painting all of this that brick red, and then come back in and do the center of it right here, the mortar color. Uh, kind of a grayish color rather than try to paint each individual brick by itself. So we're going to start on it and see how it turns out. Alright, so I painted the red on here and after I got finished I just took a little bit of brown and mixed it with what I had left over and just kind of dabbed in some of the bricks there to give it a little bit of different type of color. And so now I'm going to uh, go in and do a dark gray on the mortar. And for the brush, I'm going to use this number two liner, which is a little thinner, so it's going to fit a little bit better inside those grooves for the mortar. All right, and for the pipes, I'm gonna use this smoke color here. And for this one, I'm gonna use a number nine flat brush. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put a black wash all over it. And for that, you can just use some old ratty brush. All right, so now we got the wash on. I'm gonna go back using that same dark sea gray and I'm going to dry brush the brick back and I'm going to use an old makeup brush right here that I use for my dry brushing and of course for any kind of rust effect you can just use whatever little brush you want we're just going to kind of dab a little bit of this onto here and I'm using a rust wash from Vallejo. Yeah, we can kind of do a little bit of this. And it won't show up very good until it's dry. So we're going to add a little bit of this to the pipes.
and kind of a little bit of a rust effect coming down the wall. All right, everybody. Once we get it sealed, I think this one is gonna be done. and there you have it uh, mr. daredevil Matt Murdock whatever you want to portray him all painted up for you guys in quarter scale looking very very awesome if I do say so myself I really like how this model turned out uh, again I will have that link to the artist in the description below that way you can contact him and maybe see if uh, you can get the file from him as well and I also want to give a huge shout out to my patrons Without you guys, um, that much needed support helps me keep doing stuff like this, and I do appreciate it. And if you want to become a member of the Patreon, all you got to do is click on the link below, also in the description. And if you don't want to be a part of the Patreon and you still want to support the channel, all you got to do is just simply watch the videos. And hey, thank you so much for all of your support. We just passed over 7,000 subscribers which is a huge milestone uh, for this channel. And hey, stay safe out there. Until the next video, everybody, don't forget, get out, create something, print, print, paint, repeat, and we will see you. And hey, you can't have the good guy without having the bad guy. That's right, he's coming to Hell's Kitchen, Mr. Fisk.